we'll hit mute just so there's no background noise. Hello, this is Willow Nightingale, and you're watching the Three Count Podcast. Or listening to... Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Hit him with a, hit him with a three count. Pin him to the ground and the crowd go wild, man. Now know we all out. Hit him with a three count. On the top row crowd already know how I fly him to the floor. Hit him with a three count. And your boy real chicka 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 real. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's your boy, your nephew, your cousin. It's the Don, Chaz Evans. And you're checking out the Three Count Podcast. Let me introduce to you your debate panelists. Introducing first, he it, it that way. <laughs> Introducing first, he is the red dog of red dogs. He's the landlord of the dog pound. He's the man that runs this show because, quite frankly, I really don't do anything but talk. All right, he is the red dog, Cliff Miller. Hey, so it is the Air Force veteran intel specialist, the one you call on when you need to get the job done, the champion of chit-chat, and the Donnie Wahlberg of the Three Count Podcast. That's right, your friendly neighborhood, Red Dog. What up? And Chaz, I just want to let you know you're frozen, bro. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you totally frozen. That's crazy. Because, totally like, frozen. I totally see, uh, like, I see y'all. Yep, we looking at you, and you just, like... <laughs> Wow. Yep, That's pretty much. Straight stone face. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, right before we go live, like, you just froze. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to fix it. Um. Anyway, I'll keep going. So, introducing next, he is the Dark Lord himself. He is the man. He Listen, he was there for the first ever wrestling match, okay? Like, he was there. He saw it happen, and he, he's 50 million years old, okay? He's seen every wrestling match recorded history. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dark Lord, David. You got damn, got damn right. I was greatest match ever. I don't know what happened to wrestling. Are we back? Can you guys? Am I still frozen? Yeah, you're still frozen. Yeah, yeah, you're still frozen, my dude. Oh wow. Okay. But yeah, yeah, no. That, see, see, that's when wrestling was really good, though, back in the day. Ah, interesting. All yeah, right, it died. Yeah, still frozen. <laughs> this is still frozen. Yeah, oh, that's still amazing. frozen, my dude. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That is. I guess amazing. you're frozen. I guess so. I guess I'm frozen for the day. All right, cool. I mean, at least it's not a bad frozen pit, though. <laughs> it could be bad. Right. At least I can leave that instead of putting the, the you know, my little profile picture out there. All righty. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Three Count Podcast Debate Show, where we talk about all the wrestling uh, news topics and we argue about it, okay? And we make fun of each other while we argue with each other about it. So, with that being said, if you have not already done so, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Three Count Podcast, or wherever you're checking this out at, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitch, wherever you're checking this out, make sure you click that like button, follow us on all of our social media platforms, whether it's Twitter and Instagram, TikTok, everything. We're on it. Make sure you follow us there. Also, if you are a podcast listener, make sure you uh, give us a five-star frog splash review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Buy a shirt, okay? We got merch, so buy a shirt, please. Thank you. My pro wrestling tees. If you okay. don't, I'm coming after you. That's factual. And because in the next couple of weeks, we will be adding what a maneuver to our uh, distributor of shirts. So you can get it one maneuver. You can wait then, but hey, might as well get one now because the, these will become limited time edition shirts. <laughs> so buy a shirt. 
Let's get right down to business. Y'all. Match of the week. Match of the week. What is your match of the week, Cliff? So I'm going to have to go with uh, Darby Allen and the Butcher. Uh, Allen Rampage. Okay. Damien. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fifth again, um, buddy. Again. Yep, I have to. God damn it. <clears throat> That's how you know wrestling's getting horrible. <laughs> is it a was it a certain steel cage match? Can you say that at least? Nope, I ain't gonna tell you. We yeah, gonna leave that one alone. Is... <laughs> I think it was a steel cage match. It was his match of the week? Because if it was, that would be the same as mine. Because the my match of the week definitely goes to Britt and Thunder Rosa. Like, bruh, they killed it. Steel cage match. It was awesome. I I enjoyed it. So that is my match of the week. I think it's awesome that your match of the week is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the title of this show will be the one where Chaz is frozen. Yeah, I definitely gonna have to be that one. <laughs> the, one the one where Chaz is frozen. <laughs> That's amazing. Like I could definitely, you know, I'm just gonna chillax, put my feet up. Uh, all right, let's get to our first debate topic. So, uh, Jeff Hardy finally uh, has uh, speak uh, speaking on the matter of him leaving WWE. He uh, goes into detail talking about how uh, he's at a live event. He just felt like he just was like he was done. He didn't feel like he belonged there, at, there and he just he left. <laughs> he dipped. Um, so, uh, is Jeff Hardy justified in walking out the way he did? We'll start with uh, we'll start with you, Cliff. Then me, then Damien, you'll be uh, last. Okay. Yeah, I mean, listening to Jeff talk about like the things that he was kind of like going through, and then say just he just didn't feel like he was there. He was just kind of like non existent and just kind of sporadically used, especially when he was talking about being on a pay per view and he just wasn't like, he's like, why am I even here? Like, what am I even doing? Not just like on the pay per view or like on the shows, but just why am I here in general at WWE? Yeah, I feel like he definitely was in a right to leave and wanted to get out. You know, I mean, we know some other people who have just left WWE or asked for the request to leave because they're just unhappy. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not feeling appreciated at your job, like, bounce. Go somewhere else. Go where you feel like you're going to be appreciated. That's what we we talk about all the time on this show. We talk about it with, you know, just in life. So, yeah, I feel like Jeff was in his right. Like, he didn't feel like he was being appreciated at his job anymore. And he was like, you know what? I'm out and bounced. <laughs> Uh, so I think, so I don't disagree with Jeff, you know, taking this ball and go home. Cause that's the phrase wrestling fans have coined when this happens. Uh, I, I just, I think in the middle of match is a little much. I think at the end of the day, you still have to be, have some type of professionalism. Um, they're in the middle of a match and you just walk out. I think is a, that's a little much because you're still performing for these fans, like whether or not the, the backstage politics, whether, you know, contract negotiations and all that, that can be handled backstage. Like, he didn't have to leave on a match. That's the, that's, that's the only thing I have. Is this... They're not in the middle of a match. He tagged out. He was done with the match. And then he just went to the crowd and celebrated with the people. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. All right, Damien, what you got? Well, uh, okay, so I get why why he why he took his ball and went home. At the same time, though, like, like, like you could have waited till the match was over. Like seriously, at the end of the day, you could have just sat on the outside and waited till the match was over. Like doing something like that doesn't give you good rapport with your boss or former boss, or whatever the case may be. Like, like to be honest with you, it's it was one of those situations where it was like, yeah, he, he might as well just keep it moving. Right? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's like the epic, that's like an epic way of quitting. Like that's 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 almost the equivalent of like jumping up on the counter at your job and saying "fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, 
you ride, fuck you, I'm out. Like, I mean, I wouldn't hire him back. So I just put it like that. I mean, I wouldn't have hired him in the first place. Listen, it's Jeff Hardy. WWE is always going to bring him back because they know they can make money off of him and the Hardy Boy name. So oh, yeah. I think he knew he was at a level where he was like, you know what? Even if I left now, they're going to bring me back. And that's why it was so funny when you saw someone like John Laurinaitis was like, hey, you know, when it was alleged that he was going to, they were going to give him like a Hall of Fame spot and they want him to come back after they made him drug test. And what they find out in the drug test, he was clean. So I was like, you know what? It's kind of an epic way to just say fuck off. And I was all about it. Yeah, I mean the the, the Hall of Fame thing was 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 that's was egregious. I think on on WWE's and like I I agree with Jeff. It's not it, it didn't feel right. He said it didn't feel right. He should have been you know. Oh no, he definitely should have turned that down at yeah. the end of the day because it's the Hardy Boys like that made what Jeff Hardy. Made, you know, like, yeah, yeah, like he wouldn't have be he wouldn't be Jeff Hardy if it wasn't for you know, but that tag run of the Hardys. Like if Jeff, I mean Jeff in itself does deserve to go in by himself. I absolutely like don't get don't get it. Oh well, yeah. If you're gonna pick I, one, I, you know, if we we want to debate that, like I actually do, like he he should. Um, but I think the Hardy's induction should be before that. I think that's the Hardy's the Hardy brothers' career was more legendary in a sense than just Jeff's career. If you, you, but Jeff had the better career, though. Do you? I like I kind of have to disagree with you on that one. If you really think about it, look at Jeff's track record compared to Matt's. Like I never record. said Matt like, Hardy was Hall of Fame was Hall of Fame caliber either, though. Like the only reason why Matt should go into the Hall of Fame is because of his brother. I mean, keep it stuck. So I think that there you could make an argument. For Jeff Hardy as a singles competitor going in, more than like you could make you could make the argument. Obviously, the Hardy Boys are going into Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame. There's no there's no question about it. It's I think that if you were to say Jeff was going in solo, you could argue like yeah, like he had a he had a great solos run. Like he for, did. I mean, for goodness sakes, like the dude is a Grand Slam champion at WWE. That's, that's so I mean, it's like it's not to say like. You know, the TLC matches, all the Team Extreme stuff, like all the legendary runs that they went on were great. But Jeff Hardy by himself had a pretty awesome solo career as well. Like, not just in WWE either. I mean, we could talk about, you know, well, drug I mean, at Impact. But yeah, I was just saying, when you, when you, yeah, when you add Impact, I think that's that's a whole nother story. Uh, you know, because I because you, if you add Impact into that, you can definitely make the case for Matt Hardy then. Yeah, because this is Matt. Matt didn't get a fair shake as far as you know in WWE like his brother did, but everywhere else Matt went, Matt was you know star. He did I? Right. Like oh. uh, Matt was running Impact for 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 a good little for a good couple of years when he when he went over to Impact, he was he was like top dollar over there, and then even on the his stuff at ROH when they were uh, on the Indies, and then now look at him AW, like. Matt was a star outside yeah. of the E. Well, Jeff Hardy, like, and I know a lot of people are going to get, like, pretty pissy about this, but Jeff Hardy was Shawn Michaels of, like, the attitude and aggression era. Like, let's be real. Like, he was on no, this awesome wasn't. tag team, this legendary tag team. They split, and he became a star on his own in WWE while, like, you know, Matt went over to Impact and TNA. And like just reinvented himself and then had this incredible run. Like, yeah, like I can agree with that. But I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to put it out there like that. Jeff couldn't get into the WWE Hall of Fame on his own merits, let alone on the merits of the Hardy Boys. I don't want to give Jeff Hardy and Shawn Michaels comparison. <laughs> you don't have to, but at the end of the day, that's, like, that's not, I, I get, what, I, I see what you're trying to say though. I see what like I get what you're trying. I I, I get it. I just don't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you really say that it's not wrong? I think you're just mad because it's like Mr. WrestleMania being compared to Jeff Hardy. 
I, I think no, it's not even that. I think it's it's the Rockers compared to the Hardys. Uh, I don't. I think. I, uh, I mean, that's uh, you know, <laughs> someone. Yo, that's not even. That's not even fair. That's not even fair. No, that's, not. Uh, <laughs> that's not, okay. We're gonna move on. Tem check. It's time. <laughs> time. <laughs> on, wow, we left that one real fast, didn't we? I listen after after seeing that. Yes, in the words of Lizzo, "Truth hurts." <laughs> there it Aww. is. There it is. All right, temp check. <laughs> temp check. Those who don't know what temp check is, temp check is where we tell you our hottest and or coldest wrestlers going into this week. A lot of wrestling happened this week. Crockett Cup happened this weekend. So let's see here, Damian. <laughs> temp check. Ah, hottest Reddit wrestler as always is uh, there you go. Oh, oh wow, I didn't, know you, I didn't know you had that hat. That's a nice hat. Yes, yes, yeah, like that. Okay. My tribal chief, <laughs> your tribal chief, Roman. You, you doing, um, you're doing, you're doing my, that's my shtick. Wait a minute, <laughs> I know I stole it, <laughs> and you're gonna like it. <laughs> also, I guess, uh to keep uh, spirits alive, uh, my coldest wrestler is, uh, you know, Sean Spears. You just uh, want to you get, Wow. Hey, you let me go first. That's what you get. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, buddy. You dropped the ball. You be all right. <laughs> Red dog. Temp check. And I got to change my to coldest wrestler. Yeah, so I'm gonna say I never uh, have my, to think of one because I'm always gonna say Sean Spears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I think my hottest wrestler of the week is Thunder Rosa. I mean, let's be real. There's no, there's no secret into what happened on Dynamite. That shit was awesome. Uh, my coldest wrestler of the week. I don't care what my guy said. Cody. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> All it needs to be said. I don't care if he resigned with the E. I don't care if it was done two weeks ago. Cody. <laughs> All right, my uh, my coldest wrestler uh, going into this week. Uh, it's gotta be. I don't have anybody, so I'm going with Sean Spears because I I can't think of no one <laughs> off, off the dome. So Sean Spears. So thanks, Damien. Uh, and anytime, pal. Anytime. <laughs> my hottest wrestler of the week actually is a uh, what's it called? Is you, Cliff? <laughs> yeah, oh, you're my hottest wrestler going into this week. I know, crazy. Yeah, I I finally watched back the match. Uh, I watched the match again with CJ, and you don't know, you know this little bubble in you know of our little indie circle in the Mid Atlantic. You've been getting a lot of high praises the past couple weeks. Um, so might as well give you a high praise over here because, like, you putting in work, brother, and I, 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 I'm loving what you're doing. So, yeah, my hottest wrestler uh, going in the week is you. So, nice. yeah. <laughs> you get a- that. All right. There you go. I, I, yeah, that's wild. Because you need to yeah. – everybody's giving you your flowers. Now I'm giving you your flowers. Yeah, Can't nobody outdo that. me. You're my best friend, damn it. <laughs> Yo, oh. actually, here's a here's a good uh, hot, hottest wrestler of the week. My hottest is the Don making new friends in Glen. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I always have to I always have to tell people about my wonderful time in SCWA. Let's before we get into our next debate topic. Let's uh, let's let's talk about it real quick. So I went back to SCWA. I uh, had a, a nice singles match against uh, a large tard. Uh, he actually could get, he actually got in the ring this time. Uh, he didn't have tr- any trouble this time. Um, let's see. Chuck Silks was good, G. Um, yeah, uh, I, like I said, happened. I won. I du- uh, he got duffed. Uh, there was the my usual cowboy friend. He was there. Um, I didn't. T- I actually didn't talk to him much uh, because there was another guy that got on my nerves and like legit. Like I thought he was gonna square up. He really like he stood up to uh, to Ma- to Machiavelli. When he when he was yelling at him, I was like, "What are you going to do?" <laughs> legit, legit. I sat in uh, crisscross applesauce after after I won because Mac you said was, crisscross applesauce. I did, I did. Listen, Damien, you, you'll like this. So, uh, Machiavelli was uh, they opened. I was third, and 
So by this time, he was already tired of my face because I was out there with Max Match. And that's when uh, Noah debuted and super kicked the life out of, uh, what you call it, Bobby, which was amazing. So after, so after uh, I, my, I won my match, I sat there. I rolled out the ring. I laughed. I was doing my little, my little cackle laugh I always do. I sat in front of the dude right there on the floor and crisscrossed applesauce and just stared at him and, and was laughing at him. <laughs> Legit was just sitting there laughing. And it was like, I won. I told you. I told you. It was it was amazing. And then I went to my cowboy friend, said, Hey, did you miss me? And he goes, Don't talk to me. And I walked him out. I said, I'm not gonna mess with you today. He did. He, did. <laughs> he was he was he was a little soft puss too. But yeah, that was my time in SCWA uh this past uh was yeah, it was last weekend. So I always have to tell my wonderful stories about there. So yeah. All right, enough about me. Let's move on to our next debate topic. So we was just talking about it earlier. Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker. Uh, they finally had the, the, the steel cage match for the title this past Wednesday night. And boy, was it a fight. <laughs> the, those women beat the living crap out of each other. Of course, knowing typical Britt Baker, it, it, was, it, was, it was a bloody mess. <laughs> it was a bloody mess. And it was really good. But out of it, we have a new AEW Women's champion, Thunder Rosa. So congratulations to her. So let's talk about it. Britt Baker. Okay. She has held the title for a good little while. Let, how do we rank her among her title ring among past women's champions? We'll start with you, Cliff. Then we'll go uh, Mr. Fatal. And then I'll go. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I would say that I would put up their, like, greatest of all time. Like, it's not in that argument. Um, I think I would, I, I may, it may just sit outside, like, it may just sit inside top 10, maybe. Just because, like, the way that it was executed and some of the matches that she did have were really good. But... God, I'm thinking like Bailey's championship run right on SmackDown, and you know, obviously, yeah, like Charlotte, like running around doing her thing. I would have said Oscar during her NXT days. You know, there's so many other title runs. I mean, Camille right now on NWA being mm -hmm. the women's champion, like you know, locking it down. Diana Perazzo currently right yeah. now, right with the AAA title, and even her run with uh, her even her run with Impact. Uh, I would put up on top. So there's a lot. Gail Kim, really, like at at impact. Being so how, would you, how would you rank how how would you rank it as a whole though? Uh I mean if, if I put know, like yeah. a scale one to ten, maybe sitting at like a six and a half. So like I said, just inside the top ten, probably like number nine. I always put a top ten together. <laughs> all right, Damien, what you got? Uh, he did all right. I mean, all right. Uh, you're talking about we. So we're going, we're going like all together, right? Like all of wrestling just, or just just, just how would you rank her, how would you rank her, her time run as a whole? We ain't got even got to rank it as well. Uh, I mean, I think she's like in the top ten. You're not. I give her the top ten just because of the new company and what he's done. So like it was an it was uh it was the best Planned Parenthood women's division championship run. Okay. There we go. I'm glad you so, said that. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> no, it was like legitly hands down it's the most memorable one. Like I don't yes. remember much of anything. Absolutely. I forgot who was who did she be for the title? Cheetah. Cheetah. Oh, that's bad. How did I forget about that? See? See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm just a little sad it's over already. The funny thing is that I I I was I was low-key like that too. Right. 
And I was like, well, geez, I was in uh I was enjoying I was enjoying it. Um, and with that being said, like so I think we need to give Brit needs to get like all the flowers in the world because when Brit won the title was a sign of the women's division finally changing. Because let's like and I've I've said it from day one and I'll and I'll continue to say it, the AEW women's division had, was was lacking. It was lacking. It, it, it is it is it is it perfect now? No. I'm not saying it was perfect either while Britt was champion. There's still some, uh, you know, some dry spots. But overall, the women's division now in AEW is a completely different women's division than it was Wednesday Night Wars. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's completely different. So, and I think a lot of that, like, Britt really held it down. Britt was putting on banger matches. Like, every pay-per-view, every week almost. When she was wrestling... Britt was putting on, and we, we we said it on the show, fire matches. Britt was always in our top five, like, Britt was in our top five uh, all the time of her matches when she was wrestling. So, I would rank her, I would I would give her top five. On, That's on, so tall, though. I give her top five. Because of the simple fact is that she also lost to the Thunder Rosa, I think also adds to that because you gotta remember, she was the Thunder Rosa didn't beat her. They waited till because that the uh the, what you call it, the unsanctioned match doesn't count on her record, right? So she's never beaten Britt since then. And then Britt, you know, when Britt won the title, and they they, I I just think it's she's the best women's champion they've had, and you know, not to discredit Thunder Rosa, and you know, and just to you know, knock her down before she gets started. But I think Britt will be, you know, one of the best for a good little while because not Britt held it down. Like, they they made Britt a star. You know what I'm saying? They made Britt a star. And I think probably the one that take it off of Thunder Rosa should be Jade. But that's, you know, another... I need to give it back to... They need to give it back to Britt. I would see... Uh, See, I, I that's not what that's not why I would go. I wouldn't go back. What would, would you go back? Yeah, back to Brit or go to Jay? Yeah, I wouldn't go back to Brit. I wouldn't go yeah, to Brit. I don't think they should have took it off her in the first place. If you want to be honest. honestly, I, like I'm gonna sound so partial when I say this, so impartial because like I am such a massive fan. But I think you start building up Kira Hogan, like you really start building her up. That would be nice. That would be nice. That's my. Opinion. Oh, that would be nice. I think, but you know, I think uh, that's. I mean, I hey, just looking at. They would, it, yeah, but they would. They would either go. They would probably go take Conti before they go Kira Hogan. So I think they're probably. building take Conti up. I think they're yeah, building take Conti up to be the you know like the second top women's baby face. They might be because they're gonna split. They're gonna split Anna J up and them up. I I I I see the writing on the wall. When once they paired them up together, I knew what was going. I knew what. <laughs> I that they're, they're gonna split them up. Anna Jay's gonna probably be the one to turn on to take Conti because everybody loves take Conti. Yeah, like she she gets she gets big pops at, at the I mean, on, on the show. I just like I go out there an all time all time though. I, I, but I put Britt up there. Yes, five. Mm-hmm. Nah, top is ten is being generous. Yeah, I'm like just even <laughs> myself, and I'm like. I just keep thinking back to that. I'm like, bro, nah, I, I just, I don't know how you, I don't know how you put that out there. Oh, he fell out, but. Oh, geez. This is a great, but I just don't see how you, how you argue that point in the top five, because I get it, right? So two things that were, were done when she became champion. One, she was already a star, like becoming champion, but then she elevated the women's division in yes. AEW, but that's also not saying a whole lot. Not in a not not to be offensive to the women in AEW. It's just they're not presented that way. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, they're not getting all the flowers that they deserve. All right, he's coming back now. All right, but when you look at like WWE, right? You look at some of the women that's been don't ask what happened. Like the E, you have, you know, you have AJ Lee, right? You have Bailey. You have Oscar. You have, you know, we've already mentioned Diana Prazo. You know, you could go back and talk about Trish and her run when she was against Leah and Jackie and Jazz and all in China. 
Like that's five right there that I would name. That's like I thought would be more significant than what just Brit was, which is why I'm like Brit sits just inside the top ten. Mm. And, and obviously, this wrestling is objective. But I'm about to say, yeah, right, right, wrestling. But we not no, talking about. We not talking about. You know, and granted, there's also a lot, a lot of controversy about her. But fabulous Mula, hey, young. Oh. I mean, yeah, they were great. They were great champions, right? Especially Mula. Like, come on, she had it like for thirty-five years. <laughs> yeah. Like, we not we're not gonna talk about like. I was just like we not we not gonna mention Mickey James, like in her. I run, know, right? Her mm-hmm. runs, like that's why I'm like, I can't justify Brit being a top five. When all the leg- the legendary runs have come before her, yeah, and basically, it's my reasons. It's my recency bias. I and mean, I, I get I that, see. but that's why I was like, <laughs> my recency bias. That's a that's a tall order. <laughs> I just, I just, yeah, I, I said it from jump that the women's division wouldn't be anything until they put the belt on Britt and let her run with it, and they did it, and it. Paid off, like you said. The, she elevated the women's division. She made the women's division come to her level, and it was good for all of them. Um, yeah, yeah. We, have, you know what? It's funny because it got got dropped in twice. We didn't even talk about Awesome Kong and her run. right. Oh yeah, our run in TNA. TNA. Yeah. yeah, that was a monster run. It was. You know, you're right. You're there right. is so many. That's the thing. There's. It's so many good women world title runs that it kind of sucks for Brit to be like it's not fair for her to be tossed up in that like you said top five top 10 is being generous top 20 hands down yeah top 15 top 15 even, yeah even top 15 yeah, yeah even top 15 she could be she, she's in there and not even at 15 we're talking you know, a little little higher up but yeah, you know, top five is a bit ridiculous, sir. <laughs> I want some of whatever you're on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, my recency, it's my recency bias. I, but, yeah, but, all right, moving on. But it's our, funny how we can all look at it. Like, but we, we, like, I got to be honest, though. We ain't even, the fact that we, we brought up all these women, right? And, like, I brought up Oscar from NXT. But Shayna Baszler had a badass run. In yes, NXT, like currently, I would say I'm not gonna put Mandy Rose up there just yet, but I feel like that's climbing up, especially if Cora Jade becomes like a champion. She's yep. gonna elevate it up. Like I just think about all the women from like the NXT era, Sasha, Bailey, I mean Charlotte, like all those names right Becky. there. Was just like ah, no, was, Becky. was Becky ever an NXT champion? No, Becky was not an NXT. No, she, never she wasn't an NXT, NXT champion, champion, but her her current run. At, like you know, as when she got the top title, when she got the title on SmackDown and Raw. Oh yeah, Becky two belts. Like, mm-hmm. get like like that right there in general, WrestleMania. And we we discrediting Lita. <laughs> like we didn't even talk yeah, about you Lita. can't forget about Lita, Trish Stratus. I even talk I about mean, Lita run as champion. That's- <laughs> there's just there's so much. That's like so many other women that you can pick, like. I will I will say this though, and this is why I say the impact that uh Britt Baker had on the women's division in AEW definitely tells me like it de- definitely belongs in the top ten. Like you you said it and I agree with you that that AEW AEW women's division wouldn't have been solidified until she got that title because she was the exactly. hottest star. So but yeah, I no, she lean, was. I have to lean with you on that. And that's why I think she breaks into the top ten, but I don't think she's a top five. I would love to do this just ranking wise of the women's women's title runs. <laughs> That'd be fun. If you guys want that, send us send us a whole bunch, you know, a hashtag three count podcast and then uh put it on Twitter and let us know. We would definitely do a ranking of women's title. We do the top twenty, top twenty oh, women's that's cool. title that's runs. Be an argument. <laughs> <laughs> We should definitely we can do it. We, we, we have three count our top twenty. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm down. No, right, cool. me too. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll, we'll probably do that. We're going to put it on Patreon and OnlyFans. Make people pay for that. <laughs> right. He said, oh, oh what? Okay. <laughs> we have an OnlyFans okay. page. Yeah. They, they, oh, yeah. For yeah, OnlyFans. <laughs> we, we have oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. We, we announced that like we announced that like months ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I must have not been paying anything? attention. You must you were on the show. <laughs> oh wow. That obviously wasn't paying attention. <laughs> the fact that oh, and then someone else drops in the laundry bla- on the laundry blaze. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, like, impact yeah. wise of like how how much the title changed. I'm not gonna, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play Nikki Bella as much as people would say that she's overrated. She did a lot with that Divas title. Oh, she did a lot with the with the women's title. Michelle McCool, the, like, yeah. There's some, there's some her, her, her and Layla as as like dual champion. Lay cool, like <laughs> yeah, like that was that was fun. Body like broke the belt in half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but think about how big of an impact it was when Beth Phoenix won it, though, from those two. Right. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's so many women that we could talk about, and that just would have that same kind of effect. So I, I, I like, I like just sitting on the top ten, and there may be an argument to get her into like six or seven, but I don't see mm. anything happening past that. All right. So here's our last debate topic for today's program. Is AEW the place for Jonathan Gresham? So, uh, Mr. Gresham is your current uh, ROH champion. Uh, he's been defending the belt at uh, a couple of different promotions, being uh, at Impact, GCW. Uh, so there have been talks that uh, Tony Khan and Jonathan Gresham have been talking. Apparently, there's rumors that Jonathan Gresham was at the uh, a show in February. So, is AW the best place for Jonathan Gresham? Let's start with you, Damien. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Like, nigga, run. <laughs> Damn. Like, stick to Terminus. I understand you want to be the Ring of Honor world champion, but I really think Tony going to fuck that all up. He, he, uh, just on, uh, the, the, I feel like Jonathan Gresham is going to get lost in the shuffle. Like, uh, God damn it, I forgot his name, and that's horrible. God damn it, that's horrible. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we his tag team partner for his tag team partner. It's horrible, but yes, exactly. See, I forgot his name for a second because we haven't seen him. So it's like one minute you see him, one minute he's. I, I don't want the same thing to happen to him. So, no, nah, it's not. He needs to run. <laughs> I'm leaving it at that. Uh, just gonna put this right there. <laughs> That's not fair though, because half of WWE's roster came from somewhere else, whether it was uh the place that Tony bought, ROH, or maybe you know, New Japan or WCW. Yeah, so there's there's a, there's most of the rosters <laughs> right there. Uh personally I'm gonna say no. And the reason I say that is because ROH, like as far as like uh, Jonathan goes, he held that pure wrestling championship for so long. Like to me, and and I and I know this isn't going to be right, but that's just where I see him, right? So when I see something like Terminus, I one hundred percent, I'm like, yo, that's it right there, because there's not a real place that matches what he can do technically. And although you have someone like Brian Danielson on the show, right? Brian Danielson is like, he's kind of the anomaly because he does all like the flips and stuff like that. And he can get over with the crowd very well. And I'm sure Jonathan Gresham could do that. You but can. me personally, I've watched Jonathan just do the pure wrestling stuff. And I just, I love that part of him, the technical side. 
So I think whether he goes to somewhere like Impact and help elevate the Impact roster, or he just sticks at ROH, even under Tony Khan, and just continues to develop that brand up, I think that's where I see him. But I don't, I don't think it's going to be a good look to have him at AEW because – the fans at AEW, and I don't – this is really going to suck to say this. The fans at AEW aren't real – I know I'm going to catch this. They aren't real wrestling fans. They are spot fans. They pop for all the biggest things. Let's be real. They are. They're fucking spot monkeys. When they, when they see someone hit a Canadian destroyer, they pop. When they watch these get thrown off the ladders, they pop. When they watch two women go into thumbtacks, they pop. Do you see them popping for for a, a, a wrist lock or a unique way to get into a move? No, you don't see it. And, like, I appreciate AEW fans because I love watching them react to certain things. But if anything, if you would have seen a show like Terminus at AEW, it probably would have fell flat because fans would have been like, yeah, this is this is okay. This is what we share. It's what we share. I think something like New Japan is probably where Jonathan Gresham fits because it's a wrestling crowd. Like they appreciate good wrestling exchanges. They they understand that side of it. Whereas here, we are we we bigger is better, right? It's what we treat it. We sting sixty three years old. We don't even talk about the rest of the match. We talk about the sixty three year old man going through three tables. Like we don't right talk off about, the top of a balcony. Yeah, off the top of a balcony. We don't talk. <laughs> we didn't talk about the great exchanges that were going on between Hangman Page and Adam Cole on the wrestling side, not not the you know the, the crazy Canadian spots that doing. were happening. Yeah, like I just don't think AEW fans, and I I hate saying that that they don't like it, they don't get it because they probably will. But right now, when I see it, it's just not a good spot for where Gresh was going to be at. All righty. So, right, is AEW a good place? Listen, is that the place for Jonathan Gresham? No, it's not. Well, on the same reasons that you were saying, Red Dog, like, it's just his style is not going to mesh with AEW's audience. It's just, it's just that it's just facts. Uh, no, it's not at all. They, they, they look at at- the name. You know Jonathan Gresham, but like Damon also said, he's just gonna get lost in the shuffle. He needs to, his thing. If Jonathan Gresham wants to stamp his foot and be like that flag bearer of ROH, what he does is he goes into the new ROH and he stays there, and he he you know be's the cornerstone of that ROH. Whether it's Tony, whether however Tony Khan runs it or whatnot, if he runs it to the ground, he runs it to the ground. But he, he will. Can, he can be that flag bearer, that cornerstone of that ROH brand. He don't need to be stepping foot in AEW unless he's like that one, like maybe like ROH will come do a joint show with them or something like that. But at the end of the day, ROH and AEW, they have to be separate. Like regardless, they don't like no, no, like ROH is another brand of AEW and nothing like that. They need to be their own separate thing. It's just Tony Khan owns it. But Jonathan Gresham, the best place for him is ROH. He's the ROH champion for a reason. Because, I mean, they were going to come back regardless. We have to remember, they were, ROH was coming back regardless. And it's, Jonathan Gresham is the champion. So they had ideas of going into the you know next year already with plans of Jonathan Gresham being that guy. <coughs> ROH is, is, is his home. That's the place he needs to be. Yeah, like Terminus, yes. That's his, that's his, you know, his, his promotion. That's fine. New Japan is a good look for him, is a good place for him. But Jonathan Gresham does not need to step any place near AEW on a regular term basis. It's just I don't think he needs to go there, period. Oh, well, I mean, of course, like, you know, they have like, like don't the- even soil his feet. <laughs> Going in, look, them being in the back locker room, that was already painful. <laughs> like, he just needs to just leave it alone. Like like, I don't know, I feel like Planned Parenthood for him is like like that girl that you want to fuck with, but you shouldn't. Because she got <laughs> like six different baby daddies. And like the hood rat from hell. 
Oh my god. So like, like yeah, no, nah, that nigga need to run, yo. If you listening, yo, bro, run. <laughs> it's funny because the way you describe the way you describe AEW is like uh don't be a menace while drinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's either that or my baby mama. Yeah. <laughs> I just I I really like I love watching Gresham wrestle. And yeah, he's a great wrestler. No, I he is. Like I that. enjoy. I in, I've enjoyed him from day one. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm like looking at the way that he wrestles versus the way that everybody wrestles on AEW, like I just I just don't see it like it could. Shaq could be a hundred percent wrong and he could like blow it up and AEW just all of a sudden becomes like a whole new world of, nice. of wrestling. But I think personally New Japan strong uh or New Japan New Japan itself, like I just feel like that's where he belongs, man. Like that he puts on these classic matches and people are just like, mm, that's cool. Yay. He had a good wrestling match. I think if you took him to the Tokyo Dome and you had him against Okada. Oh, that's a bad oh, dude, the, the roof, the roof my, would blow off. My God. Like, we, would, blow off. we would all wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning yeah. just oh, yeah. to watch that match. Yeah, that's a – Oh, hands over down. Over again. Yeah. I have not stayed up to watch a, uh, Wrestle Kingdom in a long time, but if that was on – that was on wrestling. I'm definitely. <laughs> let me get. Let me because get Okada versus Gresham in the Tokyo. What? Well, Gresham would probably only have maybe five good matches in Planned Parenthood, like actual matches that people would pop for. Like maybe five people he could wrestle. And we and we can we can name them now. Like we know we can name them. Yeah, like, like Brian, 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 him and Brian would be a classic, yeah. right? And people would go nuts for that. Him and Jay Lethal would be really good, right? Him and Cole would be really good. Lee Morardi would be amazing. Yeah, that that would that be good. Like, there's like a few people he yeah, can yeah. wrestle. With I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if you. If, what's your What's your fifth one? Because I, I I I have who I would put in. I, I agree with all those. Who's your last one? Uh okay. So now I'm like. I, I have mine. I know who I would be. My, see, that, see, then, 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 there, there right? Could be I know a it gets a little more. shifty. It's like you got. Yeah, yeah, because there could be a couple of more too. Like, yeah. Uh, who would jungle, be my fifth? Jungle Boy. That could be good or O'Reilly or Fish. But see, then again, I don't know because. But then again, that's going to throw into an old classic. Like, that's an old, that's yeah. old match. Yeah. Right? Same yeah. Thing, so. That's an old match. That's, we, we've seen it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but still, on, on that stage, though. Yeah, you I know what I mean? Yeah. On that, we're talking about this is. Technically, this is a bigger station where RH is right. is usually correct. Is so this is like you know a national, almost worldwide basis. So, yeah, like, like I said, there's like a handful of matches that you, all right, cool, yeah, I'd like to see. But then after that, the fuck do you have him do? He can't wrestle Orange Cassidy. He can't wrestle like half the most of the fucking people on that roster because they look fucking stupid. See, okay, so, and, and and you're looking for, like, a fifth name, right? So, we put out there Brian Danson, obviously, was, like, tops. Lee Moriarty is another one that I threw out, right? For me, uh, Hangman is another matchup that I think, like, Hangman now versus, like, Hangman back in Ring of Honor when Gresham was there. It's two different Hangmen, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I will go He's with definitely him. gotten a lot better. Yeah, so I would go with current Hangman. Adam Cole, obviously, is another matchup that I would love to see get run right and then i think another person that would definitely suit off well and a lot of you might not agree with me but miro no that would be good i can agree with that way actually you want i want to see gresham fuck up omega i would love to see omega i i would go to the show and pay money to see that (laughs) and i'm talking like prime front row seat everything just to see that all right. Like, I want to see him bend him in a pretzel. You know what? <laughs> Cash, you know, so Rich brings up a good one, right? He said FTR, we'll put in question mark. But Cash, Cash versus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely do Cash versus. Uh, yeah. Cash. Yeah. Definitely. So, no, yeah, no, no, yeah any member of FTR, actually. 
Yeah. I'd like, like to see him. I could see him facing MJF. I would. Oh my God. Now you say that. That would be interesting. <laughs> that That'd be, be interesting as fuck. That would be. So, would be. like, you, you could get a good year, maybe two years out of him being there, but, like, again, we know they're not going to do that. So, get lost. <laughs> Let's just keep it. Let's keep it a stat. He'll end up working with some dumbasses, and they won't connect. He might get one, one out of all those names that we just said. He would probably get. I'd love to see Gresham versus Moxley. Now I'm thinking about that, it. Just because be it. it's two clash styles. Like, oh, yeah. Let me get, let me, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I want to think outside the box a lot. I know those are matches I think fans would definitely like appreciate would be those matches. Let me get Moxley. Let me get Kingston. Let me get Lance Archer. Those three guys right there, right? Because they are all just a different style than what Gresham is used to. He'll have a get, better match with Kingston out of all three of those. Right. But let me get, let me, after that, let me get, because I, I agree with Jungle Boy. I think that's a great pick as well. Yeah. But let me get, um, let me get, right. Let me get Darby. Darby. Let me get Darby. And then let me get um just off the top for another match that I want to see this completely different style. Let me get Orange Cassidy. Because I think we're talking no no no. Hear me out. Because we're talking about clashes of styles that we think might work, right? Think about it before. Jericho versus uh Jericho and um and Orange Cassidy wasn't a match that we thought was going to work out and it it did kind of like we we popped for it so i mean i, mean, I yeah. think the thing Except is for that it's funny that about, orange it's funny bullshit. about orange cassidy the, right? the mimosa mayhem match <laughs> yeah both of them so but the funny thing about orange cassidy which a lot of people don't remember is that when he was at chikara he was fire ant and he was like running shit like he well, wrestled before he, he started before he started this new gimmick i enjoyed right. watching like he, it's not, I'm not saying the man can't wrestle. I'm not right. saying, I just don't like the game. Right. No. 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 And I, I understand that part. But I think what ends up happening, like during the match, and I, I just me just like now, <laughs> writing it out. Right. Is that <laughs> obviously, like Orange Cassie has his shtick, like at the beginning, and then Gresham like starts taking advantage and like really, you know, working him. But then you're gonna see that Cassidy's gonna be able to like slowly keep up with him. And everybody's gonna be like, oh shit, I didn't realize that Orange Cassidy can actually wrestle. And I, I just think the clash of styles would definitely make the match. But that I, would make Orange Cassidy a legit player in Planned Parenthood if that something like that would play out like that. It is crazy. And then actually, so now that we're where we're here talking about Gresham at AEW, we got a question that says in WWE, who who? And uh Ooh. So I don't think he, I think he I think he should stay away from there too. But I yeah, mean, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's why I they never said it. Oh, they're gonna put him at level up. <laughs> Look, like now, like back now, back in NXT old school, then yeah. Mm. Man, oh my god, yeah. Say, like, go. I want to see. I want to see Gresham and Gargano. I want to see Gresham and Champa. I want to see. Yeah. I wanna yeah. See, yo. Like I can go down the. Oh, there, man. Timothy I can go down that that old. Thatcher, yes. Timothy Thatcher. Oh, Kevin Thatcher would be get, real let good. Me get Keith Lee versus Jonathan Gresham in NXT. That would be black good. and gold. Black and gold. You know what? Let me yeah, get Gresham. NXT. Let me yeah. Gresham and Braun Breaker. Because I think that I'd like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. I, I could I could see that. We're over here just like scripting like matches <laughs> you want to see. Facts. That's facts. All right. We got we got we gotta get to, we gotta get to Cliff's power rankings. We've been ranting. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, you know, yeah, we, we are. We, 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 this one topic got us on a on a ten minute rant, <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> it is, not, but it was a good one, though. That's it was. It, it, this is one. This is probably one of our better rants. <laughs> <laughs> sure, this sure, was sure. definitely one of our better tangents. All right, but yeah, it's time for the most, the most awesomest, bestest, greatest, and important segment in all of three count podcasts. It's time for the Red Dogs highly accredited power rankings. <laughs> Yo, that's right. It is the EST of 3CT, <laughs> 3CP. That's what we're doing. Here. 
<laughs> but yo, let's get into. So we're not going to talk about last week's power rankings. I know uh, we didn't have a show. We do have the power rankings, but I'm not even going to front, man. Like the top six was all revolution. <laughs> 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 I can't even lie. Like I was looking at the power. I was like, yeah, I revolution. must have really loved this show because revolution I didn't look at a single not, match. Revolution wasn't a bad pay per view. It wasn't. No, no it, wasn't. it wasn't. I hate to admit that it wasn't bad. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, like, uh, I did have, like, I did have the triple threat match with Dolph Ziggler, Ciampa, and Braun Breaker at mm-hmm. NXT 2.0, right? So I had all of these matchups, and I was like, yeah, but the top six, like, seven car, out of the, let's see, seven out of the top ten were <laughs> AEW related. Like, it was the it was the card. You praised the people in the power ring. Uh, this card wasn't bad. No. It was, yeah, definitely. Damn it. So let's talk about uh let's talk about what happened this last week. So we're gonna get into number 10. Number 10 is gonna be the Hardy Boys versus Private Party on Dynamite. It was fun seeing Jeff back, you know, with his brother, and they're doing their final tag run, if that's what they call it. Uh we're gonna move into number nine. This is Keith Lee versus Max Caster on Rampage. I love this matchup as well. We're going to jump into number eight. It was Adam Cole and Red Dragon versus Jungle Express on Dynamite. Let's move into our next match. Number seven is going to be Damian Priest versus Finn Balor on Raw. Okay. I thought this was a solid, solid way to start the show. Let's get into number six. We are talking about Dolph Ziggler versus L.A. Knight on NXT 2.0. Oh! As I like to do on the TikTok side of things. Um, we're going to jump into our number five match. And I think this is where things are probably going to get skewed up. People are going to ask like left, right, and center. Uh, we're going to talk about Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins on Raw. That was hot. The hot That match. was hot. It was a great match. Let's talk about number <coughs> four. Right. This was uh, Santos Escobar versus Cameron Grimes on NXT 2.0. Once again. Uh, number three, let's not fake the funk. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns versus Bullet Club on Impact. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a masterpiece. Yeah, it was a great match. Yeah. I forgot about that. I could have picked that as my match. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I forgot only forgot about that. The only reason it wasn't because I really I was really happy for that uh, Thunder Rosa. Right. We're gonna talk about number two. Which is Josh Alexander versus Matt Taven on Impact as well. Because that was like, that was great. <laughs> it's so good to see Josh Alexander back too. And yeah. last but not least, our number one match of the week. It was on Dynamite. It was Thunder Rosa versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. There you have it. As it, as it should be. As it should be. No, nah, that tag match was fire. Yeah. Absolutely fire. <laughs> like, Motor City Machine Guns is so good. <laughs> like, yeah, they are. They, they really are. They're one of my favorite tag teams. Yeah. So that's our show. Uh, for those of you who made it to the end of the show, uh, for my PlayStation friends, you get a trophy. For my Xbox friends, you have just got an achievement. You've made it to the end. Of another three count podcast episode. Because as I always say, making it through these episodes, you deserve an award because I know how long winded we all can get. So, with that being said, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay. Subscribe to our podcast on all podcast streaming networks, but follow us on social media Twitter, three count underscore pod, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, three count pod. Go buy a shirt at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash three count pod. It's the number three. Not T H R E E. So don't you type in T H R E E. It's the number three, three count pod, and go buy yourself a shirt. Okay. Share, like, subscribe, send this to listen. If you know somebody that likes wrestling, okay, send this video to them. Just send it to them. Okay. If we just popped up on your feed, just send it to somebody. You know, hey, they might like us and you might not. So hey, help us out. So, uh, with that being said, I'm your boy, your nephew, your cousin, the Don, here with the Red Dog of Red Dogs and the Dark Lord himself. 
Be there for the next episode of the Three Count Podcast Debate Show. Just be there. Don't you go anywhere else. Don't listen to any other other show. You 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 you, you come on back now, to old Sally. You just come on now. Come on back down. <laughs> it's Sally. <laughs> All right, Sally. <laughs>